So if uh, DNA is exposed to such uh, electrophilic agents, the alkylation damage to DNA takes place. As for example, if uh, the DNA is exposed to dimethyl nitrosamine that leads to the production of a monoadduct in which a single methyl group attaches to the DNA. So uh, in the presence of dimethyl nitrosamine, one methyl group uh, attaches to the DNA molecule and as this damage takes place on a single site, such adduct is called monoadduct. Similarly, when DNA is exposed to methyl methane sulfonate, which is MMS, or N methyl N nitrosourea, MNU, methylation takes place. This methylation may take place at two sites, but one site is uh, very frequent and the other one is uh, quite uh, uh, less frequent. So, the most frequent site for this methylation by MMS or MNU is the N7 position in guanine. So, you know uh, guanine ring and uh, uh, in this ring at uh, uh, number 7, one nitrogen is present. So, this methylation takes place at that nitrogen. Next, most frequent methylation takes place at N3 in adenine base. So, here uh, you can see this methylation by MMS. Uh, here it is MMS and uh, uh, this one is N7 of guanine and uh, as you know this nitrogen in the guanine is electron rich so this nitrogen is attacked by these electrophilic agents so uh, after that attack uh, methyl group is transferred to N7 and it forms N7 methyl guanine so in this way the DNA is methylated. Similarly, this is a most frequent uh, methylation by MMS or MNU. But similarly, uh, the adenine group, this is adenine. Adenine may also be methylated, but this methylation will take place at nitrogen 3. So you can see this methyl group, this has been added at uh, N3 of adenine and it forms N3 methyl adenine. N methyl guanine forms a base pair with cytosine. So, this is normal base pairing, you know, guanine base pair with cytosine. And N methyl guanine also base pair with cytosine. Then uh, there is no change, but it is readily removed from the DNA with the resultant formation of an A basic site, which may be uh, dangerous for the uh, DNA. Methylation at N3 in adenine is of great practical significance because N3 methyl adenine formation blocks DNA replication, but it doesn't appear to lead to mutation. So, uh, this uh, the presence of this uh, N3 methyl adenine, it will just stop replication. So, uh, if the replication of a cell is stopped, so that means new cell will not form at any uh, way. So if new cell is not formed, ultimately this cell will die. So it uh, uh, the presence of N3 uh, methyl adenine leads to the death of cell. But we are saying that this is of very practical significance. How uh, this uh, methylation is uh, significant. So, uh, um, uh, um, a methylation agent that can transfer methyl group exclusively to N3 atom in the adenine would have potential to kill cancer cells without, without causing mutations. So, if uh, there are cancer cells, they will uh, replicate uh, uh, more as compared to normal cells and if this methylation takes place in these cancer cells it will lead to the death of these cancer cells because the presence of N3 uh, methyl adenine will stop replication. Methylation at uh, uh, oxygen 6 in guanine 
and oxygen 4 in thiamine are much less frequent events than either of the above described methylations as uh, at N7 and N3. So uh, these O6 and O4 methylations are uh, very less frequent. So o O6 methyl guanine and O4 methyl thymine formation are quite important because the methylated bases mispair during DNA replication and they result in transition mutations. So these, these methylations, although they are rare, but they, they will lead to the uh, transition mutations. The, uh, the third site in the DNA molecule, which, is, uh, which can be attacked by the electrophilic agents, is the phosphate groups. So the phosphate group in uh, DNA backbone can also be methylated. The resulting neutral phosphodiester is easily cleaved by water to produce single strand break. So if these phosphate groups are methylated by these uh, alkylating agents, uh, it will lead to the uh, cleavage of this uh, uh, phosphodiester bond. So you know uh, there are two strands in DNA. So if one phosphodiester bond is broken, there will be a single strand break. And this single strand break, you know, uh, that is uh, comparatively easy to repair. 